Today we're going to be looking at different ways you can renovate an older stroller, maybe already own or buy used, in order to make it as close to new as possible for your coming child. As we discussed in our last video, the current crisis has brought with it a lot of economic insecurity, and buying used or fixing up an older stroller yourself might well be the best option for the time being. In this video then, we'll be giving a general overview of 10 ways you can make your pre-owned and pre-loved stroller feel fresh and shiny again. Note that for each of the categories we discuss here, we have more in-depth guides on our channel, and links have been included in this video's description. Okay, let's get started. We're going to start with the textiles, and one of the main things you'll need to do with renovating your stroller is to remove and wash them. Luckily, this is usually not too hard on the majority of strollers, and despite popular opinion, most stroller textiles can actually be washed in a washing machine, provided that you use a low temperature setting and hang them up to dry rather than using a dryer. When it comes to more difficult stains, you will probably need to use special cleaning agents, but the most common of these, mildew, which can appear as clusters of black spots on lighter fabrics or as lighter yellow or tan spots on darker fabrics, is actually easier to remove than you might think, involving really just a bit of chlorine. You might be worried that this will bleach your textiles or leave dangerous chemicals on them, but if you follow the right procedures, this is actually not the case. In some cases, you may have sewing issues with your textiles as well, but as I said with washing, it's generally quite easy to remove them, and if you can remove them, you can sew them. My main advice in this respect is to not be daunted if the job looks difficult. Sewing is just another technical skill, requiring mostly patience, and I have yet to see a job that couldn't be accomplished with a simple needle and thread, as opposed to a machine. Not that a good sewing machine won't make things easier. If the job looks too complex, just remember that, as with mechanical repair, if it's been put together, it can be taken apart and put back together again. If your sewing problem involves buttons or zippers, both of these can be found in hobby stores in a variety of colors, sizes, and styles. Push buttons, a common way in which textiles are attached to stroller chassis, are one of the easiest textile repair jobs, and push button kits at hobby stores are quite cheap as well. A somewhat more difficult problem with your stroller's textiles that can also be fixed is sun fading, which may have occurred if you've left your stroller outside for prolonged periods of time, and which can leave them looking bleached and uneven across their surfaces. If you have a stroller that is heavily affected by sun fading and you'd rather not purchase a new textile set, then you can actually dye the textiles to get the color sharp again. Note though that this process is time consuming and that it's important to correctly match fabric types to dye types, of which there are very many of both. In addition to this, darker monotone textiles will work best in our experience. And if you want to dye multi-tone textiles, you will probably need to separate the fabrics before dyeing and then sew them back together again afterwards. A last aspect of textile repair, if you really want to go the extra mile with your renovation, is to repair the foam or leather on your stroller's handle, which often cracks or peels over time. This can be accomplished either by purchasing replacement handle covers or even a whole handle from your stroller's manufacturer, by purchasing replacement foam, or by using generic faux leather handle covers, which you can either buy from a third-party distributor or by making some yourself. We found that auto shops focusing on interior work can be really helpful with this job, and the stretchy faux leather material often custom fitted to steering wheels is ideal if you want to craft something yourself. Moving on to more mechanical matters, one of the main things you may need to do to renovate your stroller is to shift out the tires and inner tubes. And luckily this is quite easy as well. Stroller tires come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes, but anything from 12 inches and up can usually be purchased from bicycle stores. Smaller sizes and tires with an unusual inner circumference may need to be special ordered online, but this is not hard if you watch our video on how to properly find your tire size. Inner tubes are generally easier since they can be patched if it's hard to get a hold of the right size, but in addition to this, you can also use tubes that are one size larger, measured in increments of two inches for fixing smaller wheels. Other than the tires, it could be argued that no single component on your stroller is put under as much pressure as the ball bearings, which go through thousands upon thousands of rotations in their lifetime, absorb a lot of shocks from the terrain, and which are also very susceptible to rust and grit being so close to the ground. For these reasons, swapping out the ball bearings if they've become loose or rusty, let alone if they've broken open, will do a lot towards making your stroller feel new again. Unless they've rusted to the axles, this is generally easily accomplished. And as with tire size, we have a guide on our channel which explains how to measure and find correct replacements for your stroller. The last aspect of renovating your stroller's wheels that may require particular attention is the connection between the front wheel housings and the front wheels themselves. The majority of strollers these days have either one or two swivel wheels in the front, and this is another one of those places that tends to wear down pretty hard over time, whether it be that the front wheels are loose or conversely feel stuck or tend to hang to the side. To fix the latter problem, when it feels as though their horizontal rotation is impeded in some way, it's usually enough to disassemble, clean, lubricate using thicker lubricants, and reassemble the wheel housings. If the front wheels are loose or tend to wobble if you move at speed, then it might be necessary to replace parts or to troubleshoot the problem using wave washers or O-rings in order to fill the gap created by the wearing down of components. Whatever else has happened with your stroller over time, there's a good chance that it's loose in places. And this is a good thing not only to deal with now, but to keep an eye on regularly 
as looseness in some places creates extra stress in other places, which can eventually lead to more serious problems. Tightening your chassis will generally involve one of two procedures, either tightening screws, which is easy, though on a lot of strollers you have to locate the screws under plastic covers or stickers, or drilling and replacing rivets, which is a bit more difficult. Be careful when replacing rivets on the main body of the chassis at any point between activation buttons and triggers and locking unlocking points, as a lot of manufacturers use rivets for the double duty of not only holding the chassis together, but also for anchoring internal springs and wires. In addition to fixing issues with looseness, tightening your chassis in conjunction with lubrication should also fix any creaking or squeaking noise issues your stroller might have. Lubrication is also very important with stroller renovation, and just plain old maintenance as well, and should be something you do wherever mechanisms and moving parts are involved. When it's not too much trouble, or you can see it's a necessity, usually on the lower areas of your stroller like the wheel mountings, ball bearings, brake system, and swivel mechanisms, it's a good idea to clean your components before lubricating. Otherwise, it's just a matter of choosing the right lubricant for the job. In my experience, three types of lubricant are the most useful. Silicon spray for mechanisms composed of predominantly plastic components, WD-40 or a generic multi-spray for predominantly metal mechanisms or where you need to spray in a crack and count on gravity and the slippery nature of the spray to run down inside and hit the areas that need lubrication, and lastly a thicker lubricant like food industry grease, multi-purpose car grease, or silicon putty for more heavy-duty connection points and mechanisms, most importantly the connection between the front swivel wheels and housings. A last aspect of making your stroller look nice is cleaning up any rust or paint scuffs on the actual chassis. Paint scuffs are just paint that has gotten stuck to the surface of your chassis, usually when people bang their strollers into walls and door frames, and is actually quite easy to clean, generally requiring nothing more than a little soap and warm water. On metal areas of your stroller, I like to use nail polish remover and a microfiber sponge for a little extra shine, but this can sometimes affect the sheen of plastic areas, so you need to be a bit careful if using this method. When it comes to rust, there are a variety of different ways of cleaning your chassis, depending on what sort of metal you're dealing with and how deep the rust has gotten. But in general, the easiest methods will either be an acidic paste like Rust Eater, which can be purchased at automotive shops, or just scrubbing with a balled up piece of tin foil. Again, as with all of the sections in this video, we recommend that you check out the more in-depth guides that we've made to avoid doing damage to your stroller. In any case, this was our general guide to renovating a used stroller. We hope this video has been interesting to you, and if it has been, we ask that you subscribe, as it helps us to continue making videos in the future. Thank you. We need your help. Like most of the economy, our channel has been hit pretty hard by the current crisis, and though we're doing our best to keep everything chugging along, times are tough. If you would like to help us out, there are a couple things you can do. Firstly, if you're using Adblocker, we would really appreciate it if you could turn it off every once in a while. In case you didn't know, as annoying as they are, ads fund all YouTube content. And in times like these, I'm pretty sure all the channels you enjoy and make use of could really use the extra revenue. Secondly, we have a Patreon page. And if you have the ability, signing up to donate even just a buck or two a month would really do a lot for us. In any case, thanks so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed the video.